Hey, this is Mike Gaz. Thanks for joining me. It's always a pleasure to bring you these videos. And today is March, is April. Well, April 17th. So we're going to talk about there's two kinds of ways of making money. Intellectual and non-intellectual businesses. What? What's that? I'm going to explain it to you, so don't freak out. Besides having an intellectual or a non-intellectual business, you have to either sell a product or a service. So you got really four issues. Let's just go through the four. I'm going to make it brief on this video. So please stay to the end of the video and don't forget to comment. I love comments because then it gives me ideas. You have an intellectual business. That's number one. A non-intellectual business. Rohit is going to put it on the thing, on the list here, the guy that does the editing. And then you have a product and a service. So you have a four ranges. You're not going to get this anywhere on the internet either. Okay. What's an intellectual business? An intellectual business is a business where you actually create something from absolutely nothing and you put that into a theory or a formula that produces income. So if you go to the movie, The Big Short, for example, they had the quant, the guy when they're doing that meeting, he'll show it on the video here, Rohit. And He's the quantitative. What's the quantitative? Well, you have these guys with PhDs and they sit around on Wall Street and they try to figure out how to predict what's going to happen in the stock market when stocks go up or down. And then they put this formula into a computer. I'm just simplifying it. Okay? Could take 5,000 hours to figure all this out. Does that make sense? Now, there's mathematicians on Wall Street that have created these algorithms and formulas for buying and selling stocks. That's an intellectually created thing. Or people that created this uh, computer where you can actually make this cup or make a car or make anything on a computer and you can do a model. So you put the information into the computer. It was created out of nothing. Facebook was an intellectual property. Why? They created it out of nothing. The personal computer was created out of an intellectual mind. Or the Apple iPhone. I'm talking to you on an Apple iPhone. People sat down and they said, okay, we want to create a mini computer that you can handle, walk around in your hand. And put it in your hand. And you can use it just like it's a real computer, but it's going to be this big. I'm talking to you, the device is only what? Not even, I don't know, four inches long and three inches wide. That was intellectually created. Someone created it out of nothing. Steve Jobs said, hey, engineers, go create this for me. And this is what I want. And this is what I want to see on the phone. Then 13 times later, this is Apple 12. They're going to come out with the Apple 13. You have the product. So that was intellectually created. Does that make sense? McDonald's was intellectually created. Well, not exactly. But the concept of franchising McDonald's, that was kind of an intellectually created concept that Ray Kroc created, and then he bought McDonald's. So you could say that was intellectually created. He said, wow, McDonald's has one location in San Bernardino. I believe that what I could do is I could make 10,000 locations, and he did. And he bought McDonald's out. He paid the McDonald's brothers 1.5 million each. That was intellectually created out of his own brain. My transactions on simultaneous close and real estate so go look at my videos on simultaneous close. That was an intellectually created model where I sat there one day and I said, I think I would like to create a way that I can buy a piece of real estate and get paid the day I buy it, not sell it. Well, how do you make money unless you sell it? Well, I'm going to sell it simultaneously when I buy. So I'm going to buy and sell it at the same time. Then I had to go through the process of figuring out how the heck to do it. I'm not going to explain it to you on this video. Then you have non-intellectual businesses or opportunities or ways of, of, of making money, not creating money. You're making money in non-intellectual. That's the business that I'm in. What's an example of a non-intellectual business? I buy something at one price and I sell it at some place at a different price. Well, aren't you using your intellect to do that? No. It's like shoveling. It's like digging a ditch. I have to go out and hunt and find opportunities that I can buy at a price, purchase it at the price, could be real estate, like the one I'm sitting in. I purchased it for nine fifty. It's worth $1.3 million. So I purchased it for $950,000. It's not worth the $1.3 million. Next year, it's probably going to be worth $1.4 to $1.5. 
That was not intellectual. I just found it. I hunted for it. Just like a guy goes into the woods, he's starving. He's like these guys up in Alaska, the mountain men. They live in Alaska and they have to go out. If they don't kill the moose or the elk or the deer or whatever they need, they don't get the meat, they're gonna die. That's not intellectual. Most businesses are not intellectual, number one. And number two, most people, especially young people like you, if you're watching this and you're a university student, you're not gonna be in the intellectual business for the most part. You are being trained to go out and work for companies to provide your services in a non-intellectual capacity. Now this is just video one. So it's gonna take two or three videos and we may combine them. But I just want you to know before we sign off on this one, I'm gonna do a recap for you too, that there are intellectual and non-intellectual ways of making money. Most of us are in the non-intellectual end of the game. We're gonna talk more about intellectual on the next video and give it a little more detail. This is Mike Addis. Don't forget to hang around for the recap. I'm gonna do the recap right now. I need the recap because it helps you to, to summarize all this stuff. Okay, so let's do a recap in this video about intellectual and non-intellectual. Number one, most people are not in the intellectual end of the game. So intellectual business would be someone created Bitcoin. That was purely intellectual. Our guys on Wall Street, they figure out algorithms so that so stocks can be uh, bought and sold and sold short or sold long or however you're gonna do this on commodities and all kinds of trading platforms and then it's put into a computer and the computer's making all the decisions. That's an intellectually created way of making money. Or my simultaneous close that I showed you, that was intellectually created by me. It may have been created by other people, but I created that formula that works for me. Number one. Number two, most people are in non-intellectual businesses. For example, my non-intellectual business is the asset recovery business. I buy something at one price and I sell it for another. So basically, I'm just hunting around out there to find something that I can get for one price and sell it for a higher price. And I'm looking for big brand names. That's not an intellectual business. Most of my businesses are non-intellectual. You get it? So that's the recap. We'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to hit the comment.